The federal government, through the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, has announced that discussions are underway to transfer the management of the national grid to an independent system operator in accordance with the provisions of the Electricity Act 2023. This move is expected to improve grid discipline and stability. NERC also confirmed that the recent national grid collapse on Saturday was caused by an explosion at the Jeba transmission uh, station. However, efforts to restore power have made significant progress with electricity supply reinstated in 33 states and the federal capital territory by 1 p.m. on Saturday. Now, this marks the third national grid collapse in one week leading to widespread power outages and the grid had also tripped off on monday and tuesday during restoration efforts in a statement posted on its official x handle nerc acknowledged the recent increase in grid disturbances and assured the public that steps are being taken to address the issue Joining us to discuss this is a business and social policy analyst, Kenneth Ikenwa. Hello, Kenneth. Thank you for joining us on the news. Hello, Dishan. Good evening. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. Now, Kenneth, how do you foresee the transition uh, to an independent system operator impacting the efficiency and reliability of Nigeria's national grid? All right, fantastic. Um, I'll just go straight to the point because all of us seem to be um, at the center of this, so at the epicenter of this uh, challenge, uh, collapse upon collapse. I've lived in this country for uh, over four decades now, and I can tell you that Nigeria is one country, one beautiful country case study where we usually have a lot of economic, beautiful economic plans and you know strategies, but the problem becomes implementation. And why is that so? That's particularly because we do not factor in the polychromatic nature you know, of our, you know, uh, uh, of, of our components, uh, different people, different cultures, different ideas and competing, you know, interests when we come to designing these policies and implementing them. Now, what do I mean by this? This will have been a fantastic initiative if there will be no political undertone that will actually determine which independent operator would actually take over this. And uh, we saw this with NITEL a couple of 20, 25 years ago, where NITEL was outsourced and NITEL, somebody was asked to come, you know, take over NITEL. And we discovered there was one company that was a, a one-bedroom company somewhere in the Netherlands and Europe that was asked to take over NITEL. So um, what I would say is that um, instead of just relying on an independent operator, I would mm. canvas for a joint venture, mm. you know, as a strategy to address this issue, where we'll have maybe some companies with international experience and then some local players that will come on stage and uh, take management, take over the management of national grid and ensure that we guarantee efficiency. But another angle to this is ensuring that when private players uh, are, are made to take over, the cost of electricity will not actually increase and that uh, there will be maximum efficiency, effectiveness, and Nigerians uh, at the end of the day will benefit from this. But this is just one angle to the problem. Mm. As the conversation unfolds and evolves, we could see others that will help uh, us solve this problem going forward. Well, electricity being, uh, you know, uh, the, after it's been privatized, you know, and the need for an increase in uh, uh, cost of energy is one thing that scares Nigerians, you know, uh, considering what they're facing at the moment. But then given the recent frequency of grid collapses and also the power outages that, you know, we've experienced, uh, what do you think are the potential socioeconomic implications of businesses or for businesses rather and households, particularly in terms of productivity and economic growth? I'll take the answer straight away uh, from what you said. Uh, basically, when there are issues like this and it's of national monumental consequence, it affects the general production possibility curve of Nigeria as it were. All right, so businesses, uh, individuals, households now have to run helter skelter to actually uh, 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 get their own energy, derive their own energy to sustain whatever. For the households, for instance, you have food stuffs that will go bad and this will cost you know, families that are having to suffer with high cost of inflation. For businesses, they will have to resort to diesel uh, and other sorts of energy to get their businesses running. And generally, when you bring that back at the macroeconomic level, to see the multiplier effect of a problem like this, it creates some degree of subtle inflation. Because somebody that operates a restaurant where he or she has to actually you know, uh, 
um, find their own energy to, and fund their own energy will definitely translate uh, the cost of that energy back to the general consumers. And basically, it doesn't really uh, augur well. It doesn't speak well for our international reputation. Um, at present, we, as a nation of over 200 million people, are managing to generate and distribute 4,300 megawatts. This 4,300 megawatts is not even setting. It is what some boroughs, it is what some local governments in some countries, you know, outside Africa and within Africa, generate or for their local governments and for their boroughs or what you call for their counties. Mm. So it, 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 it should help, it should be a pointer to a bigger problem. Why would Nigeria, I mean, having made some trillions of dollars from oil, still be having the problem of generating electricity when we have an abundant resource uh, uh, re uh, retinue of gas that is being fled and wasted, and when we have other sources of energy that we can actually convert, and when we are supposed to be a technological power with um, so many technologies, universities, so many professors uh, of, of electrical engineering, we're still having this problem. It really begs the question, and for me particularly, it is beginning to assume a humorous uh, dimension because you can't overthink on these issues. You can only hope that those who are taking decisions are taking these decisions in the best interest of Nigeria and in the best interest of making us more productive, mm. and, you know, and not making us a country that has to deal with these liabilities, you know, of bad decision making. Well, I, I agree with you. Now, uh, speaking of, you know, uh, taking decisions, putting the uh, common man at heart, uh, what reforms do you think that the NERC uh, can implement to pre uh, prevent future grid failures and also to manage crisis situations more effectively? I think so many Nigerians <laughs> would definitely have become wary of that word, reforms. So we shouldn't be talking about reforms now. <laughs> we should actually okay, be doing emphasis on strategy. Mm. Yeah, solutions, strategies, strategic action plans. I think for too much, too long, I mean, since I was a boy in this country and since I begin to understand what NEPA is and what NEPA does, we have depended so much on one source of uh, generating entries in this country. I think the basic strategic plan and the basic strategic intention that should be pursued right now is how do we diversify our energy generation basis, our energy generation pivots. Now, we've depended so much on hydropower, and so we have so many dams. And when some of these dams are even opened, it causes more you know, environmental problems. It displaces people and uh, are, are more economic damage than is expected. So I would hope that all hands will be on deck to see to it that we begin to look at how we diversify our sources of energy. We have an abundance of coal in Nigeria. We have an abundance of sunlight in Nigeria. We have an abundance of wind in Nigeria. We have an abundance of bio waste in Nigeria. These are four key sources that can be converted, harnessed, you know, by Nigerians, by the technology that's available, with electricity in Nigeria. So what we are actually experiencing in the sector is actually what we call X inefficiency. I take that again, X inefficiency. And what does X inefficiency bother on? It bothers on the fact that the capabilities and the technologies that have been deployed and being appropriated in the energy sector today are quite obsolete. And so we are suffering from technological obsolescence, capability obsolescence in that area. So we deal with that on the one hand, and on the other hand, diversify that sector, liberalize that sector, and let us implement the Electricity Act 2023 fully. Mm -hmm. What will that mean? It will mean that the Act has given me, and it individual the power to generate electricity to build a power plant as long as I do not generate and distribute more than one megawatt of electricity. And we're not seeing that, you know, come into play. We're just seeing the major corporations and those that have been there before, you know, taking advantage of, of, of this act. So we should allow individuals to come in, you know, in small municipalities and small local governments in small areas, allow them to generate and build plants that will generate some 30 megawatts, 50 megawatts, 100 megawatts, and distribute to these areas. And then that even brings more money back to the government and, you know, ensures that there is productivity and life is better for Nigerians. So I think the Electricity Act is quite holistic, but I do not think that it, the, the implementation as it stands today is realistic. We're not looking into it. If we do look into it, I think it gives us a platform and a canvas to actually address this problem and take us to the next level of development in the energy sector, in the electricity generation, distribution, and transmission sector as it were. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Kenneth, uh, for uh, taking time to speak to us on this. Always my pleasure.